Today I'm going to be showing you my eyeshadow palette collection. I'm a bit addicted to palettes and I just think that they are a good investment. You can get a lot for your money with palettes instead of buying single eyeshadows. I've given loads of palettes away as well so I've ended up with like a sizable collection but manageable and I thought I would share with you and show you all of my palettes and I'll tell you which ones are my favourites, which ones I don't think are worth the money and why I'm hanging on to some palettes that I don't like as much. So if you'd like to see my eyeshadow palette collection then keep watching. So I'm going to start with my Naked Palette collection from Urban Decay. I have a few of them. I won't be swatching all of the shadows on this video because otherwise it would just be a hugely long video. But if you want to see swatches of everything, I'll leave links below where you can find them online. So I'm going to start with my Naked One palette. This is one of my absolute favourites, if not my favourite palette of all time. The packaging is not great, it's kind of like a suede material and it's not the most practical, it gets all bitty and dirty as well. The closure of it, it's not as sturdy as some of the other ones so you know it might end up with some broken eyeshadows because it's magnetic but the magnet is not really that strong. I have travelled with it many times and I've never had any problems. I do however love the eyeshadows and the colour range and the fact that they're all very wearable, neutrals, they all go very well together. I mostly wear the shades from here to here which are Virgin Sin, Naked, Sidecar, Buck, Half Baked and Smog. I've even hit Pan on Half Baked and that's such a great eyeshadow. I absolutely love this palette. I think it was probably the best investment I made. I'll leave prices and links of wherever you can find all of these palettes below so if you're interested in any of them just check out the description box, all the links will be down there. So that's what the palette looks like close up and you can see all of the shadows are so beautiful but most importantly they are great quality, very pigmented and very wearable so I don't I can't fault this palette apart from the packaging it is great. I think this one came with a brush um, it came with like a dual-ended brush from Urban Decay here, but I must be back here somewhere. My second palette is the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. The packaging of this palette is actually a lot more good quality and sturdier. The closure is a lot better than the other one. However, the actual casing of the eyeshadows themselves is not as good. Because as you can see there, there is a loose eyeshadow there and there are quite a few of them which are about to fall off. So the actual inside bit is not as good, but the outside case is better. The mirror here is also bigger, which is nicer for doing your makeup on the go. And the shade range is good as well. This palette is cool toned and the Naked One palette is warm toned. So it will suit different people and different eye makeup looks. I like both of them, but I do tend to wear the Naked One more because I think warm tones suit my complexion more and cool, tones eyesha cool toned eyeshadows don't always suit me as well. The one thing I love is that the eyeshadow Half Baked, which is my favourite eyeshadow, is in both palettes. So if I run out of one in there, I always have the other the one in here but I do like this palette I just don't wear it as often because of the fact that it's so cool toned and I find it hard to create a very quick everyday makeup look with cool tones I find it much easier with warm tones so that's the Urban Decay Naked 2 now moving on to the Urban Decay Naked 3 it has the same kind of packaging as the Naked 2 which is kind of like the uh, metallic effect very hard closure um, hard casing material as well. It doesn't have the same problem as the Naked 2 in terms of the eyeshadows falling off. This one seems pretty secure. As you can see this eyeshadow palette is rose gold toned. So you have your Naked 1 which is warm toned, you have your Naked 2 cool toned and then your Naked 3 is rose gold toned. It is the most beautiful Naked palette of all of them for me. I think I bought this palette basically because it's beautiful, not necessarily because of the shades because I don't really think that they suit me that much. I'm actually wearing some shades from this palette today simply because I'm trying to make use out of it. I think I will never get rid of this palette because it's so beautiful and because it's part of a collection of naked palettes. Um, but I don't really wear it that often. I just can't seem to find a way um, to wear these eyeshadows in a way that looks nice on me. I always kind of like end up touching up with other shades from the Naked One maybe to kind of make it more warm tone. It requires a lot more effort to find a makeup look that suits me with this palette than with the other ones. 
but it is a beautiful palette and the shadows are so pretty. If you have fair skin and if you have pink undertones on your skin, then this eyeshadow palette is perfect for you. So that's kind of like a side-by-side -side comparison of the Naked 1, Naked 2 and Naked 3. This is Naked 1, this is Naked 2 and this is the Naked 3 there. And as you can see, they're similar but different enough to warrant buying the three of them. If you're like me and when you have one, you have to get the other and the other and the other, then I recommend the Naked Palettes. The best thing about Urban Decay eyeshadows is that they are great quality. Even if you don't wear two or three eyeshadows from the palette, they're such good quality and it's good value for money. They're not cheap palettes in the sense that you're not going to pay a tenner for them. They're, you're going to pay a little bit more than that but they are good quality and they've lasted me a long time so I absolutely love them. My last Urban Decay Naked palette is the Naked Basics. Now this one is a tiny little one compared to the other ones as you can see there. It's much smaller, more travel friendly. The packaging of this one I'm not a big fan. It is sturdy, it is easy to travel with but it's also very hard to open and if you have freshly manicured nails or if you have long nails you really struggle. At the moment my nails are just dreadful so I can just like dig my nails into this little closure and try to open it. It has got easier with time but it still isn't the easiest palette to open. It has a nice decent sized mirror here for the size of the palette which is great. I often use this mirror to do my makeup when I take this palette with me and the shade range is great. They're mostly all um, matte, apart from this one here at the top, which is kind of like shimmery, but all of the other ones are matte eyeshadows and they're all neutrals. I love this palette. I use it so often and it's so easy to wear to create an everyday makeup look or if you want to make it kind of like an evening look with a bold lip. I think this is my second favourite after the Naked one and I couldn't recommend it enough. It's a little bit cheaper than the other ones because it has less shadows, but if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend the whole price of, you know, the full Naked palette, try and get the Naked Basics. I'm actually missing two palettes from the Naked collection. There is another one of the Naked Basics out with different shades and there's also the Naked Smoky out. And that one is a, a full size one like the uh, Naked 1, 2 and 3. But I intend to get them when I have the spare money. Um, it's not like they are revolutionary colours that I don't already have in my collection, but I do want to get the full collection because I'm silly like that. So that is my full collection of the Naked palettes from Urban Decay. Now let's move on to the more random ones here. First one I've got Lorac Pro palette. This wasn't easy to get a hold of in the UK. I think I bought this in, on Amazon because I couldn't find it anywhere. I don't think Lorac Pro is stocked here in the UK. If it is, it's not very easily found. And I ordered this off Amazon and I got mine in a few days. It didn't take long. Uh, I'll leave the link below to the seller if it's still available. I did get it maybe a year, two years ago. So this is what it looks like. It's also magnetic, like the Urban Decay Naked one, but it's a much more, much stronger magnet. The packaging, not so good because it's black, but it's kind of like suede and it gets grubby and dirty, so not really easy to wipe clean. There is a mirror inside, not very big, but there is one. The shades are beautiful. I love them. I think they are great quality, really pigmented, a great um, range of darks and lights and shimmeries and neutrals and mattes. It's just a really good all-round palette. But there are also some shades here which are, you know, like not your average shades. Like this one here is a little bit more of a different orangey tone shade. It's not all neutral like the Naked palette. It does have a little bit of difference to it but it is a basic kind of neutral-ish palette like the Naked palettes so you don't necessarily have to own this one and the Naked palettes because they're very similar it really depends on what shades you wear the most and how much money you want to spend uh, like I said all the links to where you can find these palettes will be below with prices of them so that you can compare and see which one you want to go for um, but I do highly recommend the Lorac Pro palette. It was a great investment. I don't wear it as often as I should because it's been in the back of my makeup drawer for a long time. But now that I got it out, it's going in my makeup bag right here. Next, I have the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. And I remember when this palette came out, 
everybody wanted to get their hands on it including me and I bought it without even thinking about it simply because it looked like a chocolate bar as you can see there and the colors looked beautiful uh, but I kind of kind of ever so slightly regret buying it not because I don't like the quality or the shades or anything else but because it's not very travel friendly and I do have lots and lots and lots of similar palettes to this one as you will be able to see so it's not really unique in a way to me and I always end up reaching out for my Naked One palette instead of this one when I go away um, it's got like a metallic, not metallic, what's it called? a metal packaging and it has a magnet but it's not very strong um, it's quite bulky and you know just like chunky so it takes up a lot of room in your makeup bag it has a little mirror inside there and these are the shades they are lovely they're beautiful shades um, but like I said they're not all that unique to warrant me having to buy oops to warrant me having to buy in this palette um, because I do have similar shades on my naked palettes which I kind of prefer there are also some dodgy colors which I don't know why they're here like this baby pink shade here I mean this is not like I'd say the most wearable shade to most people definitely not to me and there are like two big eyeshadows one is um, kind of like a shimmery pink and the other one is a matte uh, creamy brown shades and I'd say that it would be best better if they put the big eyeshadows as the ones that are kind of like the most used like the gold one and the neutral warm brown one because people wear them the most so you know why not put these ones as the big ones in the palette and the other ones that aren't so popular as the smaller ones so it was kind of like a hmm yeah it's a good palette but I don't think it's worth the money for me the quality of the eyeshadows are is is great um but it's just not worth the money to me then i have my smashbox full exposure palette and this one was a kind of like a an impulse buy um it's uh, again it's a magnet closure the outside of the packaging gets very messy and dirty but it's okay it's not as bulky as the chocolate bar palette but it's a bit bulkier than the naked palette uh, so traveling maybe not with this palette the shades inside are really nice i'd say that the shade range on this is a little bit more a little bit darker and a little bit cooler than the urban decay naked one probably more similar to the naked two because it does have some like gunmetal shades here and some silvers uh, I'd say that I probably use the uh, matte shadows on this palette more than the shimmery ones uh, this side here is shimmery and this other side is matte and I love these kind of warm tone mattes but not so much these cool tone shimmery ones I don't think I've got my, much use out of these ones again this is one that if I were to buy again I probably wouldn't buy this one again because I don't wear it enough and I never reach for it and in terms of quality I think the Too Faced one and the Urban Decay ones have better quality than the Smashbox full exposure palette next I have my sleek palettes I have the sleek oh so special palette and the sleek Mediterranean collection Monaco palette and they are very different but they are very nice the packaging is great it's very thin very travel friendly and you can wipe it clean and it's easy to open it's not magnetic it does have like a clasp closure the mirror inside is huge which is absolutely great for traveling and doing your makeup on the go and this is the oh so special palette which has neutral shades kind of neutral some of them are a little bit funky and a little bit you know brighter than your usual neutrals but I have worn this so much some shades I can only find on this palette when I'm doing a matte smoky eye and I love the pigmentation of this palette it can be a little bit chalky when you're applying you do get quite a lot of like you know little bits but the quality is great it stays on for a really long time it's so pigmented that if you wet the eyeshadows it kind of gives you like a gel effect I've had this for absolutely ages and sleek is very affordable compared to the previous eyeshadow palettes that I've showed you you can find this in Superdrug I don't know how much they are again I'll leave all the details below of prices and everything in terms of quality I'd say that the Urban Decay Naked palettes are slightly higher quality than the sleek palettes but not by much and 
definitely not noticeable in the way if you wear makeup not every day if you wear it you know once in a while you you wouldn't notice a difference it's only if you're wearing makeup every day that you would notice how much you know kind of like easier and buttery soft the Urban Decay eyeshadows are compared to the sleek ones I also have the sleek Mediterranean one uh, palette here this one is a different palette for me I don't think I have any other palettes that have such bright variety of colors like this one and that's the only reason why I'm hanging on to this palette is because the it's the only one with this color range basically there's like bright pinks bright oranges and greens and purples they're not things that I wear every day but it's useful to have if you ever need to do anything that's out of your comfort zone with your makeup and I have needed in a few occasions so that's the only reason why I'm hanging on to this palette I don't really know why I bought it really but I don't know I think maybe for a Halloween party but that's the only reason why I'm keeping it and also the quality is good but other than that the shade range is not really what I go for but it's useful to have Next I have my MAC palette and these are just quads because I don't have like a big MAC palette but I do have some random quads. Um, the one that I use the most is this one here which has a few neutral shadows but I use the black eyeshadow carbon for my eyebrows. Then I have one here, I, I'll name them on the bottom bar below here for you because I can't remember it off the top of my head. These two here are my most used from this palette. I think the pigmentation is great on these two. On this one not so much. I've never been able to get much out of this eyeshadow here. I can't remember the name of it. I might have to just have a look at it now because I won't get it out of my head. Patina. I'm not a big fan of Patina. I think I bought it like on the hype of other people liking it but it doesn't really suit me all that much. Um, but I do like this one which is charcoal brown and this one which is called carbon. The other MAC palette I have is another neutral one and this one has some shimmery ones. It's more like light coloured uh, shades. My two favourites are Naked Lunch and Rice Paper. Rice Paper is a little bit more yellow toned and Naked Lunch is more pink toned but I do like both of them. I just don't wear it, wear them that often because it's not as practical to travel with a quad as it is with a big palette with lots of colours. So I don't tend to take this palette, instead I only take this one for the kind of matte black and the matte brown shades for my eyebrows. My last MAC palette is actually my first ever MAC palette and as you can see it's kind of like the old style packaging of MAC palettes. This palette is called Notoriety, it's a really lovely palette but I think I've outgrown it, the shades are not what I wear as much now. Um, they're all shimmery so there's not really like a matte shadow to do a smoky eye which I like. There's a lovely gold shadow here which I still like but don't wear it as often and then there's a um, kind of like an orangey brown earthy toned one that I don't like as much and then there's a pink one for highlighting. So it's a good palette but I don't think I would buy it again. This was like the first ever MAC palette I bought so I didn't really know much about what, uh, what eyeshadows suited me and I don't think I would buy it again. Then I have my only Charlotte Tilbury palette and this is called the Vintage Vamp. I was so excited to buy this palette. I don't know what led me to buy it. I think I was just heavily pregnant at the time. I just wanted something to buy that was luxurious, that would make me feel better. And I spotted this palette and I thought I have to have this. I bought this palette mainly for this gold eyeshadow that you see here on the top. The pigmentation is just not there. The application is patchy. It doesn't stay long on the eyes. And as well, the eyeshadows are all falling out of the packaging. I won't do it show you now because otherwise it's just going to cause a mess but as you can see two of them have fallen out of the packaging and for such an expensive palette I just don't think it's worth the money. I think I've worn it probably about five or six times no more than that so I was extremely disappointed. I think this was my biggest disappointment in terms of my makeup eyeshadow palettes and yeah definitely not worth the money for me very unfortunate because I do like Charlotte Tilbury makeup, I have some of her lipsticks and they are great but this eyeshadow palette just wasn't for me. Next 
I have this little palette here from NEXT which is called Make Me Beautiful and the shades are kind of, I don't know if there's a name for this palette. It's just a neutral eyeshadow palette. I got this for Christmas and it's been useful. I don't wear it as much but the colours are nice. They're all shimmery though but they're really nice colours and if you're looking for something in the high street, nice and easy, cheap and cheerful, then give this one a go. I don't think I'd get rid of it. It's just really nice looking and I don't know, I just like it. It's special to me because it was a present and I like to keep nice presents. Next I have a Bobbi Brown palette but this one isn't actually an eyeshadow palette. I think this is a blush palette so let's not talk about this one and let's move on to this this Bobbi Brown palette. This one here is beautiful. I love this palette. I love the packaging. It's so nice and expensive looking. It has a magnet closure, very strong magnet. It's very com compact and easy to travel with. The shades inside are lovely. It's very cool toned as you can see, very similar to the Naked 2 palette. So it's not something that works well on me for like a day look, but for an evening smoky eye, this looks beautiful. The shades are so pigmented and the quality is really good. I think this palette may be slightly overpriced, but it's a lovely palette and if you like Bobbi Brown eyeshadows, I recommend checking out this one. For me, the packaging of this eyeshadow is the best. Out of all of my eyeshadow palettes, this one has the best most expensive looking, most loveliest packaging. I don't know what it is about it, it just has a lovely kind of feel to it. I don't even know what material it is, but it's really nice. It feels really durable. So these are all of my eyeshadow palettes. I hope you guys enjoyed having a little look at my collection. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these makeup collections videos and what you'd like to see next. I think I've done a blush collection and a MAC lipstick collection but not like a full lipstick collection. So if you want to see that let me know. There's also bronzers and oh I've done a foundation, top 10 foundation collection and top 10 concealers. Um, so if you have any other things that you'd like to see like my collection of makeup then do let me know and I'll do that for you. If you'd like to buy or have a little look into any of these palettes that I've talked about the links will be in the description box below with prices and where you can find them and if I can find reviews of them I'll also put links to reviews because I know it's really helpful to read some reviews and see the products how they perform before buying them and that's what I do before I buy uh, makeup. I usually look at reviews before I buy something unless it's like an impulse purchase. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any videos from me. I'll see you next time. Bye!